introduce yourself properly and then uh, we can get going. Yeah, introduce myself properly. Um, okay, <laughs> <laughs> more than just a name then. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm a, a pioneer minister, which um, I don't know how familiar that term is across the denominations, but it's a Church of England term really for um, somebody who has a particular gift and calling and is given the freedom uh, or the permission to start new things. Um, start new churches so it's kind of church planting but I think in a very much of more of a cross-cultural way um, uh, rather than sort of congregational church planting although the, the term is used quite widely yeah so I've been in Pool um, on the south coast for 13 years working as a pioneer minister we've started a couple of new um, communities of faith and we've also started something called Pool Missional Communities, which is an organisation that looks after those two communities of faith and also supports other pioneers. So we're supporting um, John and other pioneers, also pioneers who aren't ordained or you know paid or licensed in any way. Um, and just basically trying to you know, help think about the reimagination of church alongside the established church. That's in a nutshell. <laughs> That's great. <clears throat> yeah, and, uh, and I'm John. I um, it's part of my story is that uh, the mission saved my faith at Bible College. I did three years uh, and then I nearly dropped out. And uh, well, I did drop out and uh, I came. I deferred my year and came back uh, because I was so excited um, about learning more about the mission of God. I felt I felt a, a calling and a swelling in my heart to, towards that direction. And I was fortunate enough to get placed in Stopsy Baptist Church. Um, where I've been for uh, for seven years, um, which was prior to what I'm doing now, uh, and they were really pro missional communities, um, and they were launching them sort of left, right, and centre. Uh, and it was at Stopsley that this question uh, emerged in in me, which was about how do you when you when you start getting an inkling of God's doing something in the park or in the pub or uh, wherever it might be. What? Do, how do you then move from uh, from that place to a place of being like an organised, uh, accountable crew with a mission and a purpose and uh, and whatever? <clears throat> and so we there uh, at Stopsley, we were thinking of some kind of course to help people uh, do that and get the basics of theology and uh, missiology and context. And different leadership styles and those kind of things uh, but then it got put on the back burner for a little bit um, and then we moved to Paul we've been here for three years and uh, I'm very passionate about what God's doing in our local neighborhood uh, and I'm also pioneering through a, uh, a social enterprise that we've started up called the Water Sports Library um, and under the banner of uh, Paul Missional Communities uh, that's why we've revisited this question because we feel like um, it's a timely thing to be asking uh, that question that we asked at Stopsley, what, how do you take a small bunch of people or even one person uh, and how do you move them from, oh, God might be just like doing something over there um, through to um, a more solid idea of a team and what that might look like with a purpose and a direction. Paul. Um, what are we doing next? <laughs> Talking about the... The ingredients that we wanted to include yes Sorry. we haven't rehearsed this as you can tell uh, yeah so yeah as as um, as john said i think when john arrived it kind of catalyzed we were ch chatting and um about those sorts of questions i'd always had on my heart how do we help other people start missional communities because missional community was kind of the language that we use to talk about the fresh expression we started called reconnect which is now a kind of community of communities it's four missional communities at different parts of pool and um because it feels it feels to me that we've talked a lot in the church about growth at, uh, but primarily we mean by addition and i'm uh, uh, and i really felt like multiplication is is what we were called to do how do you multiply small you know intentional missional communities of people into lots of different contexts because we have you know societies change and pro proliferated into this whole diversity of contexts i think we need lots of small missional communities engaging with these different places so we've tried different ways of doing that in the past in terms of training people and encouraging people but it always felt a little bit clunky it always felt a little bit resource heavy and so looking for something that was really simple really easy that didn't require an expert to come in and tell people what to do or 
um, so that it sort of seemed like something kind of mysterious and and, and experty, um, but something that a little group a group of people could use themselves, um, and uh, and in the sense that the way that that training worked or the way that that material worked helped them form missional community. You know, the medium is the message. So actually, how the how this resource works is helping people form missional community as well as helping people engage with some of the principles of mission and and uh, um, what it means to be church um, alongside of it so um, so we, we we came up with this idea of far, of a series of of tablecloths like large sheets of paper uh, where the material is on the sheet of paper because in missional community we spend a lot of time as, as small groups of people sharing food and and eating together and doing a lot of worship and uh, discipleship around the dining table um, so if that that is our life together how about we use that to help other people uh, form missional communities maybe they're already meeting around a dining table and asking these questions how do i reach my neighborhood how do i reach this particular network of people or whatever so let's use that context so you just put a, a, a large sheet of paper on that table you might even plonk some food down on it as well and you and the conversation is the training and as you as you talk together and pray together and dream together around that material um you're forming community and you're forming a missional community and we hope by the end of the process you've done a lot of thinking about mission you've done a lot of thinking about the nature of church you've done a lot of thinking about how how Jesus did mission and um, and you want to uh, emulate that as a, as a as a disciple of Jesus and you started to think about vision and values and you've made some decisions about about getting started so it takes you through that whole whole process that's great yeah brilliant so I think now we're gonna <clears throat> we're actually gonna show you what we've done and uh, I think Paul's got those uh, on your computer haven't you Paul the five tablecloths. So, are you ready to go and share your screen? Yeah, sure. I'll share my screen here. Um, making sure that I share the right one. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm going to take you through the different sheets. Um, not forgetting that these are a in reality that the physical pro the physical product. Um, resource is uh, is the sheets are a zero so they're big they're really big um and they but they fit nicely on your average sort of dining table um and just yeah one thing i didn't mention is that uh, what we've done is kind of throw quite a lot of ideas at people at the beginning of the process there are five sheets you could take five weeks over it but it's probably better if you took longer because it seems to me that community takes a while to form so it might be that you spend you spend a number of weeks on one sheet or maybe you do it every two weeks or in a sense it's up to it's up to your group um, but there is quite a lot of material here um, and the and the idea was um that initially the the material kind of sends you off in all sorts of diff different directions it's kind of divergent and 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 it might feel quite overwhelming in a way because it throws some quite uh, um some quite complex ideas at people and that's quite deliberate in a way because it gets us out of our assumptions and our usual ways ways of thinking about things and ask some quite difficult questions about our assumptions about mission and our assumptions about the church um, and then in the last two it converges it says okay you've 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 discussed um all of this material you've prayed you've been listening to god you've been listening to the spirit you've been you know, between sessions out and about in your community, and perhaps God has been speaking to, to you through that as well. Then you begin to converge and make some decisions for your for yourselves as a group. Um, so this first one that you're seeing here, as you can see, they're they're all beautifully designed. We've got a fantastic graphic designer who it wasn't me and John, I can tell you that now, um, who did all the design work. Um, uh, she took our, our slightly scribbled down, down on a bit of um, lining paper ideas and turned it into these beautiful designs. And the first one is uh, is all about mission. It's asking what is mission? Um, how do we understand mission? What assumptions do we bring to mission? And what's our relationship with mission? Um, so from the bottom left and going clockwise, we've got the five marks of mission. 
Um, I don't know how many of you use that or your denomination uses that, um, but in certainly in the in the Anglican Church, it's quite it's a lens that people use to think about about mission. And some people perhaps are more orientated around caring for creation, and others are much more evangelistic. It's all about sharing the good news. But um, it, it's a helpful lens to help us realise that mission can be any num uh, you know a whole range of things. Then going clockwise, the top left, where is God active and present in your world? So I always say this when we do these seminars, but, you know, coming clean that for me, God is a missionary God. And so when we're, we, we're, we're trying to catch up in a sense with the, with the missionary God, the God who is already at work uh, in mission in our communities. So yes, the church gets to participate in that mission. Um, so uh, much of our role as missionaries is to listen to what we see God doing um, and, and see if we can join in. So that's why we ask the question, where is God active and present in your world already? You know, where do you see mission taking place and how can you join in with that? Uh, then at the top, what does mission look like? That's upside down because as you can imagine, if it's sitting on a table, you've got people sitting around it. So it'll, it'll look the right way up to the person on the other side of the table. What does mission look like? So just giving some exa practical examples of what mission looks like in your context. Um, and then top right, who are you? Uh, that is, this is about the relationship in mission between the church and the world. And uh, for a lot of people, mission is all about the church. For, other pe for some people, it's, it's, it's more about the kingdom of God and about finding the kingdom and building the kingdom in, in, in society. And for others, it's kind of a mixture, but a mixture of the two. And that sort of begins to, te begins to tease those, I think, important questions uh, out for people. And then finally, in the bottom right hand corner, what's your motivations for mission? Uh, I think sometimes we bring all sorts of, all sorts of assumptions, sometimes hidden assumptions about what, what mission is. Um, you know, I've been in PCC meetings, unfortunately, where mission is really about maintenance. It's really about getting people into the church to make sure we can keep the church going. Um, personally, I don't think that's what Jesus was asking us to do. I think he was asking us to make disciples um, and he would build his church. But, you know, that's the sort of thing that those, that, that question begins to, to unearth. And in all the work that we've done as a missional community in Poole, I think that's why we started with mission, that we bring assumptions about mission um, into the mission that we do. And uh, it, from the very beginning, to be, get, to be able to unearth those and talk about them honestly, I think is really important uh, if we're going to do mission together. So that's the first sheet. And the second sheet um, is about the relationship between church and gospel and culture. Um, and record, beginning to tease out and talk about the fact that our culture has changed, our society has changed, and the church's relationship with society and its place in society has changed. And the, the place of Christianity in the gospel has changed. And we need, to be, we need to be honest about that and reflect on that. So we use the image of the, of the lens of a camera with, and just giving different lenses on that, on that question. So the one at the top is about is about kind of society, people, and and talking about the church. If you see the uh, the circle there with lots of different words around it, that's sort of saying, well, it used to be that the church was very much at the heart of our society, and everything kind of revolved around it. Whereas now the church is one institution or one organisation amongst many. Um, and, and and what does that mean for our relationship with society? And so there are all these questions around the edge that kind of uh, help you get get into some of those questions. Um, the next one is a monopoly game as a as a as a metaphor for you know who makes the rules ethically, who makes the rules now. Uh, again, it used to be the church um, in partnership with the state to some degree that that made the rules about how society kind of operated um, morally, ethically. Um, but ha but the rules are changing uh, all the time. And the church is increasingly peripheral to uh, how, you know, ethically and morally, what rules uh, we kind of live by. Um, and then the third one is about beliefs, about what people actually believe. Um, and we, we, we sort of use a, a kind of art image to think about beliefs being almost like kind of museum pieces, 
how do we carry our beliefs? Do we carry them as museum pieces thinking, well, this is this is what the church has always believed and that 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 is the way it is. Or um, what it says, what if our Christian convictions were like art? In other words, you know, can we can we sort of make them a bit more participative and um, allow people to experience them um, a bit more um, rather than seeing them as something that's sort of almost is kind of um, historic and, um, and, and, and inaccessible. And then finally, the last one is about the church um, and uh, this idea of, of the church used to being the, the, almost like at the center of the, of the bottom of a valley. So um, if you see culture as like gravity and that gravity, the culture used to bring people into the door of the church through baptisms. I mean, I'm thinking particularly from an Anglican point of view, but I'm sure that's true of other denominations as well. But, you know, from the sort of established state church point of view, baptisms and weddings and funerals, um, uh, you know, we, we have this this responsibility to to be at those points of life with with anybody in a parish. But that is changing. Less and less people are coming through the doors of the church for, for that reason. Um, and so increasingly, it feels like the church is on the edge of a hill in that some people still find that the, cult, the, the gravity of culture bring them to the door of the church. But increasingly, culture is taking people away from church, particularly Sunday morning church, but also um, other ways in which church interacts with people's everyday life. So, again, there's an, well, there's an awful lot there, but it's teasing out this whole thing about church, uh, the nature of church, people's attitudes to the gospel um and and the, the the culture of the society we live in the third one um is um about sort of missional practice about how we how we go about our mission and we felt it was really important to um uh, to bring the bible into this whole process and so this is really quite a simple session about giving people the opportunity to to dig into some of the stories of Jesus and how he interacts with people, how he goes about doing mission uh, in the Gospels. So um, the the metaphor, uh, we like a nice metaphor, is, a, is the jazz club, because um, one of the ways I've heard um, Pioneer Ministry and Reimagining Church talked about is faithful improvisation. Um, so we're improvising how to be church, but faithful to the principles, to the you know, to the core of the gospel and who Jesus is and, and why he came. Um, so it can look like all sorts of things, but it can be it, but it's faithful uh, to the gospel and to, and to the person of Jesus. Um, and so what we encourage people to do is dig into these stories. Jesus talking with a Samaritan woman. Uh, Jesus sending out the 72 and saying, well, what are the principles of mission there? How does Jesus go about it? What's he asking us to do? And how could that translate into our missional practice in our context in, in, at this time? So those are your three sort of big ideas, divergent kind of um, sessions. And then we begin to say, OK, what does that mean in terms of being missional community? And so this lot, this uh, penultimate one is um, about the principles of being missional community. Um, so we encourage you to think about a vision um, and encourage a group to sort of actually write that vision down. So we encourage people to write it as a tweet, 140 character tweets, not that tweets are 140 characters anymore, but you know what I mean? Uh, just just trying to say something about, you know, you've journeyed together perhaps before this process, um, but through this process, you know, what is God calling you to do as a missional community? And, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but could you write that down, that, that sense of what you're called to do? Um, we talk about, we encourage you to talk about values. So what are the, what's the sort of DNA that you're beginning to feel it, it you know, says who we are? So if you reconnect, we've got five words that talk about who, what, about our, about our community. They're the values that kind of go through everything that we do as a missional community. And they'll be different for mission, for different communities. There'll probably be quite a lot of crossover. Um, but it's a really helpful thing to explore so that in the future, everything you do, you can say, well, does this fit with our values as a community? 
uh, we talk about the three dimensions up in and out, which has been really helpful for the stuff that we've done in pool and thinking about in all our activity, how are we balancing the relationship to God uh, as a community? How, how are we growing in our relationship to God? So the up dimension, how are we growing in our relationship with one another, the in dimension, and how are we growing in our in our engagement and our relationship with the wider community, the out dimension? Um, and that's just we found that a really helpful way of kind of um, balancing our energies and our and our activity so that we're trying to grow in all three dimensions. And then encouraging people to think about family life. So just very practically, you know, if, if you're up, if you're operating like a community or a family, there'll be rhythms of gathering and engaging with one another and spending time with one another that, that hold you together as a community, much like much like a family has those sorts of points in the year or in the week or in the month by which you do family life. So encouraging you to think about I think about that, um, because, again, that will be different for, for every group. Um, in, in you know, depending on uh, all sorts of different things. And then we also, this upside down one on the top left hand corner, encouraging people to think about leadership. How is this community going to be led? Is it one person saying everything and, and making all the decisions? Are you, are, you, are you making decisions as a group? Is leadership facilitative? Is leadership a bit more directive? We offer you some different metaphors for leadership to help you sort of tease that out. I'm nearly done. And uh, the last one um, is really a sort of summing up one. And, and really, this one is, is very much a kind of um, we invite you to 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 um, not saying that you haven't prayed through the whole process already, because I'm sure you will have done. But actually encouraging people to have a different kind of evening that's a bit more reflective and a bit more about discernment, about praying together and listening and saying, where, what is God calling us to do? Um, we've done this journey together. We need to make some decisions now, but we want to do that in a prayerful way. We encourage you to, to reflect on all the conversations that you've had and to begin to, to make some decisions together. They don't need to be the, the, the decisions forever, um, just the decisions that help you get on the road, hence the door um, out, into, uh, out into the future, as it were. Um, so you'll see references to the, sheet, the other sheets that you've seen already. So it's a summing up and a, a kind of boiling down to, right, what are we gonna do for the next phase of our life together? Um, and then write those down and, 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 and go on your way. So I hope that's a helpful summary and he's given you a chance to sort of look at what the sheets uh, look like. Um, I'm aware that some of the text and the images will be too small on the screen for you to see, but I hope that gives you a, a flavor of these, of these different sheets. I'll stop sharing now. John, over to you. That's great. <clears throat> Thanks, Paul. Uh, some people have written questions in the chat, and uh, and I appreciate that. If anybody has got a question at this stage, Paul has chucked a load of material at, uh, at you. So do uh, feel free, as I begin, maybe to address some of these questions, uh, to write your own in the box. Um, and um, there is one more chunk of material that we want to get through um, before we finish, and there'll be another time to ask some more questions towards the end. Uh, but if you've got anything burning right now, just whilst you think of it, do, do write it in the chat box. Carol, it sounds great in Winchester, what you're up to. It sounds really good for those um, in, uh, who are looking at the chat. Uh, Carol's involved with community lounges in, um, in seniors' homes um, and wondering, you know, whether there's there's a house group cell group discipleship opportunity there um so that sounds great and carol if you'd like to talk about that more um, and explore how you know potentially the resource could be used as part of all those discussions then uh, then do let us know um dan uh, yeah dan i think and the first question from nick is similar are there any accompanying documents available for tablecloths yes there are there's uh, yes there's a, a really well produced um, sort of booklets um, full of facilitators notes um, with you. We'll give you some tips towards the end about how to facilitate um, these groups um, and, and different ways that you could use the tablecloths. Um, but it does, it does come with, um, with a booklet um, to help people. But, um, but the booklet was really written for lay, you know, lay folks. So anybody could pick up this booklet and anybody could be able to host these things. 
and unfortunately, Nick, no, they're not. Um, they're not wiped down tablecloths. We'd love to uh, <clears throat> sort of find a way of doing that, but uh, they're made out of paper, and um, you can, eat, if you want them to be recyclable, I guess you know there's a sticky note option. But they're just designed so that people can kind of scrawl and scribble um, all over them. But um, we just couldn't quite find a way of making uh, wipe down work in a cost effective kind of uh, way. Amanda, thanks for this. Uh, how would you choose the form or choose the group to come together to go through the material? That's a great question. And that's almost like um, there's almost like a preliminary little bit of work probably that would need to be done before you get to table. I think table is for people who it needs to be some kind of pre-existing group who who have a shared interest or have have found God at work, um, you know, somewhere you know, you all live in a neighborhood or you're all going into the seniors home or you're all at the pub or, you know, whatever. <clears throat> and we're working, we're thinking about uh, things that might address, uh, might swim a bit further up the river. Um, how might you interest your church in mission? Um, that kind of thing. One idea, though, would be to use the first three sheets of, um, of the tablecloth with like a leadership in, uh, team in church, just to start asking those questions about what mission is where God works, how he works, and the place of the church and community. And you could almost do that with like a scatters group. You know, it doesn't have to be a fully formed team, um, but they would be quite um, they would be quite good as a discussion starter without going through the whole process. But yeah, well, we're looking. Yeah, go on, Paul. John, I was going to say, I wonder whether I, I agree. You know, you probably we probably had in mind a kind of pre-formed group, you know, that a group of people that are formed somehow and are now thinking about mission. But I, I do wonder as well whether um, it, it, that you you could use, as you say, the first three to sort of tease out, you know, maybe you've got relationships with people um, who you seem to have sh share a heart for mission with, but you haven't kind of formed a group. But this this might be a reason to form yeah. a group, you know, yeah, you, yeah. to use to use this resource and sort of um, just uh, help help you discern whether becoming a missional community is something that you want to do. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's great, helpful. Uh, and how many people would you recommend sitting around a single tablecloth? Um, I, don't, I don't know if we talked about numbers, did we, as such? Um, I, I can't imagine there being, you know, how, how many people can you get around a table? You know, is, is this a small team? Is this, you know, a group? Of, you know, I can't imagine going much larger than 10 people. You know, you, it does need to be, you need to, uh, it's, it's designed to go around a table. You need to, you know, be able to have a meal together comfortably. Um, and, and likewise, you know, perhaps two people might be, might be too small. We might need, you know, a couple of couples or, you know, so, you know, three, three and 10. I don't know. What do you think, Paul? Yeah, yeah, I, I think, I mean, community probably is three, isn't it, at, at the minimum. Um, once you get more than 10, I think group dynamics, yeah, become a bit more, um, I don't know, messy, is the, I don't know if messy is the right word, but you know what I mean, it sort of gets a bit unwieldy, yeah. That's great. Should we move on to this, uh, the next chunk of, um, of stuff, and then you guys can ask some more questions, is that all right? That'd be brilliant. Yeah. So if right. I'm able to share my screen, let's see if I can. Oh. Can everybody see that? Yeah, brilliant, thanks, Cole. So this uh, resource obviously started off as, a, as an analog thing. We were, we were trying to work out how do you use the medium of the table to help people into, uh, you know, to missionally form people and teams. Um, but then COVID hit as we were piloting the thing and it had a quite a, a successful pilot. Um, and, then, and then the pandemic hit us. And so quite quickly, Paul and I were thinking, well, how on earth can you do this thing uh, online if you've got a bunch of people who might not be able to meet as regularly? Or if your community, and I know quite a few communities are, they're uh, built around a network rather than um, a neighbourhood. So if you had a shared interest, but it's further, uh, you know, you're quite spread apart, then um, we wanted to develop a way that you could use this resource uh, online. And so we came across this thing called Myro, uh, which is uh, an online website and it's free. Um, you use it in conjunction with uh, a chat uh, program like Zoom, like we're on now. <clears throat> and what it enables 
enables you to do is to uh, is to put a single document in front of your team of people that you're meeting with and for them all to be able to edit it in real time so that you can see what each other's doing uh, exactly the same as if you were in the room together a little caveat uh, might, it takes a little bit of getting used to your facilitator, whoever uh, that might be, would need to get their kind of head around Miro and about um, and around uh, as well as Zoom. Uh, but it's certainly not impossible, and uh, we've had like quite a bit of um, of success with it. We we run some training as well that's just around digital uh, resource, so that you can uh, you know that people can feel completely competent in running it, and then we give away. Uh, we give away the, the digital resource and the training as part of a complete package. So if you're interested in that, do uh, do give us a, a shout or, or let us know and we'll get you all together at the same time. Um, it works a little bit like this, if you can see what's going on. Uh, once all your team has downloaded or logged into Miro, um, they'll get a board. You can share a board with your team. So here would be an example. The team would then click on the board and you would be in something. <laughs> That looks vaguely like this. <clears throat> so this is one that we've just developed for training purposes, and I'm only going to give you a demo at the moment. So what you could, what you'd be able to see, if you can see a little hand moving about, you'd be able to see all your team members as a little hand at the same time on the screen, uh, which, as you can imagine, without some instruction, can get a little chaotic. But um, but over on the left hand side here, there's uh, there's. Uh, just a number of different ways that you can edit the document that's on the screen. And so I'll just show you a couple of really simple stuff. Um, we ask people, you know, what's your favorite food? They say curry in Indian. <clears throat> so I might want, for instance, a fry. Yeah. So and you can make those as big or as small as you like. You can point at things. And you can even, if you have a look down here, you can comment on other people's sticky notes. I really don't agree with this. All right, so you can start a conversation off the back of your comments. So you can load more than one document up there at the same time. Uh, if I just pull out the screen here, we have uploaded the tablecloth that you've seen before. So if I zoom in to one of the sections, you can see that people have already had a go at this section. What does mission look like? People have put uh, the example of Christian community, loving people where they are, demonstrating what the life of Jesus looks like, carriers of the kingdom everywhere, every day, online spaces, serving the poor and the marginalized. You know, uh, discipleship is a higher priority than programs. So you can see that with the right kind of instruction, uh, with a little bit of facilitation, you can get a conversation happening in exactly the same way that, that you would have around a meal, where people can edit these things as you're guiding your group uh, through them. Miro's a great tool, uh, really um, powerful, <clears throat> and, uh, and like I say, free, which is, uh, which is great. Um, does anybody have any questions specifically about that? I've sort of zoomed through that section uh, of it. I don't know if anybody um, has any questions as we speak. I can't quite access the, uh, I'll stop my sharing. There we go. Just what was your, uh, just what was your pondering? Yeah, we, um, we do the training and the, and the resource 50 quid for the, um, for the digital stuff. And the um, and the training it all comes as like one package together. So if you, that's you, hopefully that is helpful to you. All right, I think we are on to the next section, which simply is just a space for you guys really to ask any more questions or comments. Um, before we've got we've got a few tips on how to use the resource. Um, we want to tell you how much it is and where you can buy it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so before we get to that sort of concluding bit, has anybody got any uh, any questions that they might like to ask? Which guys, this is Carl speaking. You can either write in the chat box or um, if you want to raise an electronic hand, if you click on the reactions tab on, um, on the Zoom uh, screen, then you'll see there's an option to raise hand uh, and that will just give us a, uh, an idea if you want to ask a question we can introduce you come off mute ask your question uh, and these guys will answer 
can't believe that um, it's all gone quiet. Those are all the questions asked and answered. I can't believe it. <laughs> That's it. Just uh, just to, to kind of get get started. So um, you you mentioned John about um, the training for for like group leaders or facilitators. Um, mm. Can you say a little bit more about what form that takes and kind of how long it is and um, and how people can contact you if they're interested in that? Yeah, absolutely. To uh, I mean, we uh, are very happy to periodically run group training uh, that will probably be online because if it's in Miro, then um, then it's it's handy to, for us to actually do a demo together. Um, so and that would be we can take up. I think we've we've had up to about twenty people before. Is that right, Paul? I can't remember how many, how many people we've had. Well, um, awesome, isn't it? Yeah, and so we'll take people then through. Uh, through the resource itself, like Paul did earlier on, uh, and then we'll also, on top of that, show people how to use uh, use Miro. We've also um, produced three videos as well on just just about Miro, so that people can, because I think with technological stuff, uh, sometimes it's difficult to read through instructions, and it's easier just to watch a little video about it. So we've done three instructional videos. Um, but yeah, so to get in touch with us um, at the moment, we haven't got a date for training because we uh, we don't know quite how many people are interested in the digital side of things. So if you are, um, either put it in the chat or email uh, email us um, or uh, get in touch through the, through the website. Um, yeah, that'd be great. I mean, Carl, if you if you're able to uh, in a minute, just put our email addresses on the on the chat. That would be. Uh, I'll certainly do that and I'll also put um, a link to the website as well where you can access and buy the resource um, so I'll put that in just a second a few questions flow in now for you both right. um, how many groups have done this so far it'd be really lovely because I, I, I know that there's, there's been a good few um, to, to get an idea of how many have done it and maybe some of the feedback you know the either the difficulties or the really positive stuff that you've heard back from the groups that have done it so far sure Paul, do you want to do you want to answer this one? Yeah, um, we've had a lot of interest, and we had a the pilot was um, we had nine or ten groups that used the pilot. Um, so uh, as John pointed out, everything was sort of thrown up in the air by pandemic, by the pandemic. Well, like everything else, I suppose. But um, so we had nine groups do the do the pilot, um, and and a, some of them got through it <clears throat> before lockdown, and some of them didn't. Those who didn't, some of them tried it online and some didn't. Um, but we had some positive feedback. Um, a Baptist minister in Amesbury, can't remember her name, John. Perhaps you can remind me. She she did it with her group, didn't she? She yeah, was Kate. engaging with a new new housing estate. Yeah. Um, they're building a lot of houses on Salisbury Plain for people coming out of the army. And uh, she's got a little a missional community there. And I think she found it really helpful in, in helping that, that missional community form. It was sort of um emerging um but the course kind of really brought them together and got got them on their got them on their way um that's one particular example i can remember i don't know if you've got any other yeah i think up in derby patrick douglas uh used it i think with his uh with his community i forget the context actually i think it was more sort of church based they were looking at how how can we help reimagine uh what parish church might look like up here so they ordered the first one as a pilot fairly recently, and then actually just a couple of days ago, they ordered another seven. So really, uh, I'll be fascinated to see how that goes uh, That goes up in Derby. That would be fantastic. Um, we had uh, a bishop as well um, from Australia or, um, order one uh, fairly randomly, I think. Um, but he'd heard about it and he wanted to use it in a rural context, um, again, in his, uh, in his parish up there. So... To be honest, at this stage, the, the resources are kind of going out and it would be really interesting, I think, to see and hear what comes back from people um, and and, uh, and how you guys have, have, have used it uh, and where you've used it, what kind of context you've used it in. I think that'd be great. Who just meant, there's just a few comments, the questions about facilitators. Who'd just pick up on those, John. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I think... Just to be clear, the facilitation course that we've been running is is really for those doing it online, simply because we found that facilitating it online is is much more demanding um, and actually will, and, and needs more facilitation. 
Um, and so um, we felt that helping people um, know how to use Miro and knowing some of the, the ways that you can facilitate conversation online, it would be worth doing that training. But if you're using it as a physical tool, just sitting you know, in a, around a dining table in somebody's kitchen, um, we, we've got some, some pointers in the booklet, um, the booklet here, which comes with the, if you were to order a copy, you get the 5A0 sheets and you get this facilitator's booklet, um, which definitely the facilitator will be, it will be really worth the facilitator reading through that and thinking about their group. Um, but I mean, we, we, we really just su suggest the facilitator's job is to sort of make, is to create the space, time and, and, and date and venue and, um, ensure that the resources are in place and then just help the conversation flow and our experience is um, that isn't a huge task because the conversation ten tends to flow pretty naturally once you've got the material in front of you so um, fi facilitating the conversation physically is 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 a relatively simple task i think yeah and purposefully so i think and yeah. what was we was we're talking about this actually it might just be worth giving you a few tips if you are planning on uh, on thinking about the resource then <clears throat> you know there's a few different ways you could go about it and we're also looking for feedback to hear well maybe you've got a different way of using the thing you know so uh, so one could be if you had a bit more space say that you were at a conference for instance and you gave a, a, some you had some more time or a day a day long prayer retreat or whatever it was you could have a more marinated approach twice the case the one terming it as where you would leave you could leave the tablecloth somewhere uh, and you could probably do this online as well uh, and just let people sort of mull over it uh, go up to it engage with the material themselves and just stick sticky notes on it um, just get their heads in gear good particularly for uh, people like the introverts who need like who might need just a bit of like I'm not actually sure what I think about this right now you're throwing loads of stuff at me let me go away and, and process it might be a, a good idea just to kind of let this let the sheet sort of sit there if you are doing it uh, in an evening like um, like we've suggested um, then um, then you might want to just uh, again put the sheet down you have your paper and then you ask people you know what are you drawn to and you it's it kind of turns into a kind of spirit-led thing do you know what i mean like it's it's about honing in on particular parts of the conversation that the spirit might like draw your attention to um <clears throat> it's yeah and being aware as the facilitator of oh okay well maybe actually uh, we you know we, we need to focus on on this particular subject for today uh, because I think when you're presenting with stuff like this, and certainly there's a part of me that always kicks in and think, oh, gosh, I've got to get through all the material tonight. I've got like, you know, two hours. But obviously you, you really don't have to do that. And I think that there is a part of this where where some of those sections are, are quite hefty, actually, in themselves and will easily keep you talking for uh, for a long time. So don't feel the need to do that. And then also, but you might feel the opposite. Uh, and you might feel like actually our group is just a bit ragtag, we're a bit all over the place. And there might be some people who would just take over the conversation, you know, if you let them. So uh, perhaps you, you do want to work your way more systematically around the section or uh, around the around the tablecloth or draw people's attention to specific parts of it that you think are uh, are important. So that's that's I guess that's sort of a slightly a, uh, more direct, uh, more strong leadership kind of uh, uh, approach to it. Just, um, just a couple of questions, guys, to ask, uh, answer before we kind of come into land in a, in a little bit. Um, um, uh, I'll let you guys kind of round up just before we close in, in a second. Um, you mentioned that one session per sheet might not be enough. Uh, this is uh, someone's asking if they were going to try and sell this to um to his dccs how many sessions should i suggest i mean what is the ideal amount of sessions per sheet do you reckon is it uh, you mentioned this john about marinating in a little bit is it is it is it three is it is it two is it four what would what to, to kind of to, to um to get all the juices out of each tablecloth which is possibly a metaphor we don't want to go into too much <laughs> how, many, how many sessions would it be well, we've we've started off with, you know, with five and one one uh, per week. 
But I, I think we have felt, and certainly we've experienced uh, other churches sort of saying, particularly number four, the tablecloth around sort of leadership styles and organisation, uh, easily spanning a couple of weeks. Um, and the answer really, Carl, is that we don't really know. We wanted to create something that was time bound so that you weren't in that limbo formation stage for ages and ages before you had something to go, OK, it's not perfect, but we're ready. Um, but likewise, you, you could spend, you know, two, three weeks on on each tablecloth. It's really up to you. I don't know if, if you've got anything to add to that, Paul. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. In, in a sense, we don't know. Um... I think a lot depends on the context and, and the group that you've got, you know, have they grappled with any of that, these ideas before? If not, then um, then I agree, you might want to take take more more sessions over over each sheet. But also, what, what are you trying to achieve? Because um, uh, I'm not quite sure, is a DCC a, a, a sort of church council, is it, um, for a Baptist church or something? Um, it, it's not it's not a Baptist thing so if you don't recognize it either Paul all right maybe it's maybe it's a deanery church council but anyway yeah. it, uh, I'm imagining it's some sort of church council for the more the, for the congregational church or the parish yeah. or whatever um, I mean I found having these discussions um, it, it, it I think it really depends what you're trying to do if, it, if it's just opening up those questions then then one session from time to time might be enough. But if you're actually trying to produce a sort of mission strategy or you really want to make some decisions, then um, I, I take as long as you need really to, to, to go through those issues before making those decisions. I hope that's not too vague because yeah. as, as John says, we don't really know. It's, and it's really about you using it, how you, how you want to use it um, rather than feeling that you have to, to, to stick yeah. to a particular timetable. <clears throat> That's helpful. Uh, the guys from the guys from New Wave Community in Cornwall are, are saying. So, are you suggesting that um, leaders, facilitators do the course with you first, um, or uh, can you pick it up and run with it? I think I'm right in saying you can pick it up and run with it, yeah. but the yeah. facilitators course could be quite helpful. Say a little yeah. bit just to mention on that one. Yeah, no, only to say, yeah, the paper version is, uh, we would say it's fairly straightforward. You could just pick it up and run with it. Each one of those has got videos for facilitators as well, just to give them, a, um, you know, an extra helping hand. And we produce the facilitators notes to make it really simple. But also me and Paul are totally available. So, you know, if people have got questions and stuff, we'd love to just like, just pick up the phone and give us a bell and like, we'll just, you know, happily have a chat about it. We'd love to hear more about your context and where you are and what you're up to. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really approachable in that way. And it would be great to have that relationship with people. Bro, there's a question here from an interim minister of a smallish church that um, has just started after going through settlement process um, and wanting to build vision for the local community. Is this resource something which would benefit the existing church community to help it look to move more effectively into the community? Is this going to be a tool for that? I would, see, I would definitely say yes yeah we, we think it is you know in fact and during the trial uh, the, the pilot in fact uh, a local church did exactly that so, uh, a small uh, smallish church took it away to sort of reimagine how they might engage with their local community and they enjoyed the process so much they even uh, they even put up their completed uh, one of the tablecloths as a kind of art piece in the in the in the church itself so uh, yeah really really nice so yeah uh, I think it. I think it can be used and should be used inside local church context as well. Well, the obvious question is being asked, which is, how much is the material, please? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so if you got Paul, um, Carl has kindly put up on the um, on the chat, if you go to that link um, that Carl's put up, um, you'll find the tablecloths there. One, the physical tablecloths start at eighty pounds, um, which I know sounds quite a lot. We are really pleased with them, and we'd love to. Uh, we want to keep them at a, a high quality. Um, and then the more you buy, the more discount you get uh, on them. So I think the discounts go like this: uh, you get ten percent off for two, you get uh, fifteen percent off from three to five, and then if you order six to ten, you'll get twenty-five percent uh, percent off. And it's worth saying as well, Carl, that um, it would be great to get orders in fairly soon because of Christmas, basically, and just trying to work out stock and getting them printed and uh, the logistics, basically. Well, just just in terms of the ecumenical matters, DCC stands for District Church Council. Thank All you, right. everybody. 
We've learned something, that. learned something like today. There's a really interesting question being asked here um, from um, the guys again from uh, New Wave. Have you thought about a youth kid friendly version of this resource? We've got loads of children and tweens who we want to engage in discussions about our community and what it looks like moving forwards. And there's like there's been a couple of um, of amens um, to that mm. one. Is that something you thought of? No. Yeah. <laughs> We haven't talked about that it's at all, no. But yeah. what a great idea. Yeah, what fantastic a great idea. idea. Yeah, youth and children's led missional community. How good would that be? Yeah. So so um, I'm, I'm thinking that um, there's a, both, I, I guess, within the Baptist world, as I, and I know there is in the Anglican world as well, resource teams that I've got a CYF for children, youth families focus. So um, you guys know who they are, but I'd certainly love to introduce you to the, one, to the guys that I know. Uh, because it does strike me as an amazing resource for for kind of intergenerational families to do together. That's a great thought. Yeah, thanks, guys. Bro, yeah, bro. Um, uh, so the cloths, I think, are pa paper, not fabric. I can answer that one. I think of that. Um, is it £80 for one tablecloth or for the set of five? It's £80 for one set of five and the facilitator's notes. And the facilitator's notes as well. Cool. Yeah, people like an intergenerational thing. I think mm. that we are kind of getting through the questions there. Uh, we just make a note as well that um, Paul's email address that I put in was incorrect. So I'm going to try and put it again. It's just Paul at Paul M MC. Is that correct, Paul? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I did put that there. Don't worry. Um, yeah. That's Paul, amazing. I'm going to put those. I'm going to put those contacts in as well so that um, people can uh, continue to get in contact with you if you want. Uh, we'll round it up in just a second. I'll get you guys to round it up and then maybe maybe one or both of you can just pray for us as we go on our way mm -hmm. in just a few minutes. Just to say, everyone, that, that um, this is something that um, you've heard it and probably my guess is, is that you've warmed to this as a resource. Um, that the, this whole presentation has been recorded and it's going to be available on our YouTube channel and, and the, the link there has just gone into the chat box. So if you click on that, um, give me kind of a couple of days to upload it. But if you if you subscribe to the channel, then YouTube will tell you, it'll give you a little nudge next time you log in uh, when it's been uploaded. Um, and we've got loads and loads of mission webinars that we've done over the last months and years as well on that channel. So take a little look at them. Last week, we did one on um, how to use social media to your advantage as a church over this Christmas season to engage with your local community. That was last week's webinar. So um, please do take a little look at that. Um, and keep in contact with us as well. If you want to know of other stuff that we're doing, then we're all over the social. So there's the shameless plugs as well going into the chat. Give us a That's click and like and a follow. Um, John, Paul, thank you so much. There's lots of thanks coming in on the chat there. Um, that was as inspirational that time as it was the first time I heard it. And I can think of so many church communities that actually at this junction, groups, if not whole church communities, would really benefit from the vision that is stimulated by the conversations that I had around this community um, and around this resource. Uh, do you guys want to just finish off? Um, any final thoughts and then maybe pray for us before we send people on our way? Well, for me, just to say thank you, you know, thanks for your time and thanks for, uh, yeah, for you coming. And we genuinely are interested in doing, in, in listening to where you're at and what, what's going on with you. So if you want to connect, we, we would love that. So, yeah, uh, I don't know if you've got anything to add, Paul. You know, we can hey, just thanks for the opportunity to, to let you know about it. And thanks for taking up a, an hour of your time um, of a autumnal evening. And um, <laughs> Yeah, as John said, um, I mean, everything's been thrown upside down by by COVID and we think we think this is a a good resource. It's come out of a lot of experience, um, but it's it's still being road tested in terms of its ability to, to generate new missional communities. So, yeah, we'd love to hear about your experience of using it, if that's that's if that's what you end up doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, uh, just to say before uh, you head off, please do take a little look um, back through the chat, see if there's anything there that's worth clickable, um, links that you might have uh, for different things as well. Um, John, do you want to pray for us? Just so we have yeah, no worries. 
Father, I thank you for your kingdom and your kingdom's work that is going on all over the country. Uh, and thank you that it's being done by all of us as a family. And uh, we get to participate in your work. Uh, Lord, if this is, uh, resource is helpful, I pray that uh, it is uh, it would bless communities. Um, but Lord, I pray that, um, that ultimately that more people would get to know you and get to love you. Um, so bless all these people who are doing that amazing work. Thank you. Amen. Thank you.